Just when you thought after the success of the Mario film and the new Fallout Amazon Prime TV show that we might be entering into an era in which gamers actually get good media based upon their favorite IPs, along comes the Borderlands film. Which is most certainly the worst piece of media ever made about a game, and possibly one of the worst pieces of media of all time. Making a video, though, on the Borderlands film is kind of challenging. I initially wanted to do a deep dive into all of its horrors. The problem is, you can't do a deep dive into a children's swimming pool without breaking your neck. And shallow is exactly what the Borderlands film is. From the absolutely horrible performances were given by Kate Blanchett, Jamie Lee Curtis, and <coughs> Jack Black, to some of the worst action scenes I've ever seen in a film, every single aspect of the Borderlands film feels like it could have been generated by ChatGPT. But about an hour wading through the shallow, repetitious dialogue and the horrible combat scenes, a lurking sense of nausea began to come over me. Maybe it was the fact that I'm coming down with this flu, but I think it was something else. The show isn't just horrible, it's also condescending, radically condescending to its audience in a way that literally made me nauseous. The film opens in a way that you almost couldn't ruin with your standard Borderlands intro explaining the vault and the history of Pandora. But this too is ruined by a horrible voiceover performance by Kate Blanchett, who, oddly enough, is the person that introduced the first film of The Lord of the Rings, one of the most famous intro narrations in the history of cinema, and somehow she's doing it badly here, with a really, really horrible southern accent over a bad script with a lifeless delivery. The whole opening of the film is just girl boss scenes with her until she eventually meets the cast of Kevin Hart, Tiny Tina, Tar Tannis, and all the rest. By far the worst scenes in the show are the interaction between Tannis, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, who's also a fantastic actress but showing none of it here, and her interactions with Kate Blanchett, who's playing the siren Lilith. Jamie Lee Curtis's portrayal of Tannis as a neurodivergent character borderlines on absolutely offensive and would make Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory blush. While Kate Blanchett does this weird thing throughout the entire film where she wants Lilith to have a lower voice, so she's intentionally trying to speak in a lower register to seem more masculine, and it's just really awkward and I can't imagine why an actress of her caliber would ever do something so obviously like high school drama. Somehow when these two flaws combined and the characters of Tannis and Lilith get together, it's awful. Tannis is kind of supposed to be the mother figure in the sense to Lilith or at least stepmother. And this also is weird and out by the fact that Jamie Lee Curtis and Kate Blanchett are only nine years apart. They're from the same generation of actresses and seeing one play the mother and one play the daughter, where the only real difference between the two in age and appearance is that Kate Blanchett has a lot more makeup on and has had a lot more cosmetic work. But I'm going to avoid complaining about Hollywood ageism for the rest of this video. Of course, Kevin Hart is in this film, by the way, as Commando Roland, and he doesn't help matters at all. You can really tell that Kevin Hart is phoning it in, because Kevin Hart, as much as he annoys me, can be funny. In fact, he's quite capable of being at least a little bit funny on very little to go with. But he is funny phoning in his lines in this film. You can just see from the dull, dead expression in his eyes, especially when he goes into this one scene where he's supposed to sacrifice himself for the rest of the group. He wants it out of this project. As for the writing, the plot is no better. It's an action film. Uh, Lilith lands on planet. Uh, Tiny Tina thinks she's the chosen one. Tiny Tina's with Roland and that psycho guy Krieg who just says rah, rah, rah throughout the whole film kind of guess that they get together with Lilith they have some adventures they confront Atlas they open the vault Lilith becomes Firehawk blah 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 shooty shooty pow 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 it's just so derivative but it's the kind of derivative that could have been okay if all of the little dialogue bits and all of the acting had fallen into place and it does not but this is the complicated part of making this video for me because I kept racking my brain and rewriting different scripts, all failing, because I couldn't figure out what makes it so 
bad. Sure, a lot of shows have bad acting and I still enjoy them. Heck, I'm a big fan of CW's TV shows, by the way. I recently did a video on evil and a lot of people in the comments of that uh, video were saying how I overlook the show's many plot holes. Guess what? I don't care about plot holes. As long as the show is entertaining me, that's good for me. So I should be the kind of audience that's supposed to enjoy a cheesy Borderlands flick, not be physically nauseated by it. And I think the explanation that I've come up with in the end is that it's layers upon layers upon layers of condescension that have come to really represent the Borderlands franchise and then be summarized perfectly in this film. It's no secret that Borderlands fans have been complaining about the writing since Borderlands 3 going down to Tiny Tina's D&D &D Adventures thingy. For me, I can kind of bother to ignore it. I don't think it's as good as the writing in the first two Borderlands, but you know, whatever. But what makes the Borderlands film so bad is you see a bunch of Hollywood writers look at the writing for the games and say, oh my God, this is really stupid. Gamers must be really dumb and they want a really, really dumb movie, the big dumb dumbs. And it's that sense of poor writing and condescension to the perceived audience that really makes the film just great on you in a way that there's no possible way I could convey in a YouTube video. If you want to watch the Borderlands film, I do not recommend doing so, but you can do it and you will just feel that awkward sense you get if you sit down and are forced to watch like TV meant for children and the person through the screen is kind of talking at you. It has that vibe. It's inexplicable and it's hard to explain. They also just fundamentally misunderstand even the more cringy humor of the Borderlands franchise. And no one symbolized this is better than the horrible performance given by Jack Black and the horrible script that was written for him. Jack Black replaces David Eddings, rest in peace, who used to voice uh, the famous Claptrap character in the Borderlands series. But Claptrap, who's normally a little bit on the sassy, funny, stupid slapstick side, in this he's just mean to Lilith throughout the whole film in a way that isn't attractive or at all interesting. Like, Claptrap is a pretty easy character to write. He has a big ego, he overasserts himself, and then funny things happen. It's like, Literally the easiest type of comedy to write in the world. You could have brought in Amy Schumer to write some claptrap jokes and they would have worked. I mean, they also would have all involved getting the clap because that's how her brain works. But you get what I mean. It's not hard to write a few good claptrap jokes for the film. And there's not a single one that lands at all in the entire hour and a half film. The other thing that really adds to the sense of condescension is that near the end of the film, they really try and build on this relationship between Lilith, who turns out, as we know from the Borderlands games, to be the chosen one, the Firehawk, and Tiny Tina, who thinks that she might be the chosen Iridian, and how they it's kind of meant to be a mother-daughter kind of bonding experience thing. And the film really thinks that this is going to be a touching development. And it's just not... For example, the moment when Tiny Tina finds out that she's not the super magical awesome Meridian, she says, wait, I was supposed to be the chosen one. And Kate Blanchett responds in a voice so deadpan and useless, you are special, just not in the way you thought. It's like there's, there's, there's only two answers as to how this film didn't get canceled in production. Either everyone involved is a moron. Or they literally think the audience of gamers, the same people that praised the Fallout TV show and enjoyed it and loved the Mario film, we're just going to eat this up. And I really think it's the latter of these two. If you watch this far into the video, like and subscribe for more gaming news rants, particularly on things like films and gaming journalism. And I'll see you in the next video where hopefully I will have recovered from this experience. And until then, peace.